to our devotion this morning where we continue our whole theme looking at truth what is truth and we have been looking at some fundamental principles regarding this question uh, we said firstly that simply being sincere doesn't mean what you believe is true and secondly that all world religions have elements of truth but not all world religions can be true we already noted the similarity between world religions and christianity those are kind of the soft issues but when it comes down to the real core issues there are fundamental differences so consider buddhism buddhists don't believe in a god and they don't believe in any type of eternal existence and now when you contrast that with Hindus, the Hindus do believe in a God, but a God who is impersonal, one who can only be approached through countless smaller gods and idols. Islam, whose God is Allah, are very different to Hindus in that they do not believe in many gods, but only in one God. So if you look at any other world religion, none of them believe that you can receive forgiveness for your sins here on earth, which of course is the core of Christianity since it points to the one person Jesus Christ who died on a cross for our sin Buddhists believe that that man is worthless they they live but a temporary existence their doctrine is summarized in terms of the four noble truths one life is suffering dissatisfaction two the origin of suffering lies in craving Three, suffering can be stopped by, by stopping craving. And then, fourthly, the way to stop craving is through this eightfold path that leads ultimately to nirvana, complete enlightenment, where you are free from all craving. Now, that is the part of this eightfold path, which is right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration so quite clearly if you have a, a buddhist declaring there is no god or the psalmist on the other hand saying the fool says in his heart there is no god you have a a problem both statements cannot be true at the same time so whilst there may be elements of truth in different religions they can't all be true the third principle that we want to look at is if truth is absolute and not relative surely discovering that truth matters more than anything else in life let's consider our life here on earth for a moment if you got onto an airplane and you were invited into the cockpit and you just saw this the sea of, of of lights and buttons on the console and you asked the pilot what these were all for and he said well i, I don't really know but i'm going to kind of test them out during the flight to see what they actually do I mean, how comfortable would you be on that flight? What if you heard the control tower saying, OK, we want you to take off in a northerly direction on runway X. And he said to the, the flight controller, well, actually, you know, I, I, I went north yesterday. Today I'm going to try going in a southerly direction. Um, you see, basically saying to the tower, there's no such thing as objective truth. I'm going to kind of wing it and experiment with a few things, even though in my training they instructed me uh, on what everything kind of uh, stands for in the cockpit and that I must always take off into the wind. You, you can't just change the rules of the game. You can't, you can't distort truth. You can't uh, take something that is factual and something that is, that is absolute and make it relative, especially in an aeroplane in the same way when it comes to our faith we also cannot do the same you see friends as long as we're here on earth there are certain objective truths facts that have to be accepted or followed otherwise it's going to cost us but even then we've just been talking about life here on earth temporary things but what about eternity remember what we looked at some weeks ago about listening to the voices and when it comes to truth, there are so many voices that try to convince us of the truth. That if you believe this or that, that's all you need to do. And that's what will bring fulfillment in your life. 
Don't you think that question is so crucial, crucial enough to warrant your full attention and devotion to seek out what is actually the truth? One thing is true for sure, and that is that we are all going to die. Can you really convince me that you would be perfectly happy reaching the finish line, thinking, I think I did enough to get to heaven. I, I feel I was on the right path. I, I hope I wasn't wrong. Really? Hope? Can you honestly say you don't think about the fact that there's more to life than this? And yet I'm not even going to talk about what you believe. I'm simply posing the question. Don't you think it is something that you ought to think about? Something that you ought to make sure about? We've all heard the quote from Mahatma Gandhi who said, I like your Christ but not your Christianity, kind of referring to Christians. And I guess I can identify with that and many of you can probably too. I know there, there's a lot of hypocrisy out there, especially in the church and in Christian circles. But let's just forget about that for a moment. No matter what you think of Christians, no matter what you think of Christianity, no matter how you've been raised, no matter what you believe, I want to invite you and encourage you today to look at Jesus. We've been busy looking at Jesus in the recent uh, series that we started last Sunday and looking at Jesus, our teacher, and what he actually says. And I would encourage you to 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 link up with us when we look at the series because he is the one we ought to be focusing on. He's the one we ought to be listening to. We ought to be judging Christianity, not on Christians, but on Christ. And so we're going to be looking at four aspects of the life of Jesus uh, tomorrow. I just want to highlight those four aspects and encourage you to look at those aspects when it comes to kind of weighing up what you believe to be true. And so let's bow our head in a word of prayer, shall we? Lord, we just thank you again for, for this topic of truth. And we know that there are so many competing voices out there trying to convince us of what that truth is. But Lord, at the end of the day, there's only one truth. And that truth is in your word. That truth is your word. The word that, that was there in the beginning. The word that became flesh and dwelt among us. No other than Jesus Christ our Lord. And so we pray that you would just continue to, to help us to grapple with these things and to, to be able to come to our own conclusion as to what that truth is. And so bless us as we go into this day, as we continue just looking at this, this subject, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll bless you. Have a wonderful day.